Okay, so in this video we will try to work out uh, dimensions and units of the universal gravitational constant G. Now, to do that, we will need to recall uh, the basic formula for the universal gravitational attraction that you may remember from high school. And in its simple form, the formula states that the force of attraction between two masses is written as universal gravitational constant G times the mass of the first object times the mass of the second object over the distance square between them. So now let's use this formula to figure out what are the SI units written in base units for the uh, gravitational constant G. So let's rework this and write down G in terms of all the other variables in this formula. So G is equal to F R squared over M1, M2. And now we are pretty much ready to write down the units. So SI units of G are, so we have F here, which stands for force, and as you know, force is measured in Newtons, so we, are, we say M for Newtons. R square is measured in meters, so meters squared. M1 and M2 are both masses, so they're measured in kilograms, so we have kilogram squared. Uh, remember that Newton by itself is a derived unit, so we have to decompose it into base units. Now, in order to do that, we need to recall the simplest formula that involves force. So what is the simplest formula? Pause for a second and think about it. The simplest formula would be the uh, Newton's second law, force equals ma. So force equals ma means that Newton, the unit of force, is equal to mass, which is measured in kilograms, times acceleration, which is meter per second squared. So we have meter per second Square. Now we can take this Newton, the derived unit, and plug it in into this formula. So what do we get? Newton is in kilogram, meter, inverse square second, times meter squared, over kilogram squared. Now, in principle, you can leave your final answer as a fraction, but uh, usually when we write down the units in base units, we would write it as a multiplication of, the, of different powers. So here you have kilogram and kilogram squared, so this gives you inverse kilogram, then meter cube, and seconds to the negative two. So these are the base units of the universal gravitational constant. Now, how do we get from the base unit to dimensions? When we write dimensions, the way we do it, we put the variable or the physical quantity that we're talking about in a square brackets. And then we use the table, recall the lecture, we use the table where we have a list of physical quantities, their base units and their dimensions. So in this case, we have mass, the, the, the letter that, is, that we use for mass in dimensions is capital M, so this is going to be M to minus 1. This is meters, so this is length. The letter that we use in dimensions for length is capital L. And finally, seconds, this is for time, and for time we use capital T. And this is the final form for the dimensions of the universal gravitation constant. Um, note that when we write down the dimensions of the variable, we only put the uh, physical quantity in the square brackets, but not the letters themselves. So that's pretty much it. Okay, so in this example, uh, we will try to work out 
SI units and dimensions of the uh, permittivity of free space epsilon zero. To do that, we need to recall a formula where we see that uh, epsilon zero. And if you remember from high school, the very first formula where we see that is the Coulomb's law. The Coulomb's law states that the, in, in its simplest form, non vector, scalar form, it says that the force between the two charges is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, q1 first charge, q2 second charge, over r squared, the distance between the two charges. So to find the units of epsilon 0, we just need to work it out and rearrange things to get epsilon 0 in terms of all the other variables. So epsilon 0 is equal to q1, q2, 4 pi f r squared. So now we can write down the units for epsilon. So units of epsilon, q1 and q2 are measured in coulombs. So we have coulomb squared. 4 pi is just a number, so it has no units, so we ignore it. Force has units of Newton. r squared is meter squared. <coughs> Remember that Newton uh, is a derived unit and we've all already worked out the units for n in the previous example, so let's just write it down. Newton is kilogram meter per second squared. What about charge? If you remember the formula, the table uh, with dimensions and units, a uh, coulomb is not one of the base units. The base unit that we see in the table is an ampere. So we, we need to somehow relate coulomb to an ampere. And if you want to relate it, recall the definition for current. Current is unit of charge per unit time. So coulomb can be written as ampere times second. So let's now take these two derived units and plug them in here. So we get Coulomb square becomes ampere square second square. Newton becomes kilogram meter per second square and then meter square. So we finally get kilogram inverse meter cube inverse second to the fourth and a squared, ampere squared. So these are the base units of the epsilon zero. So now using that we can write down the dimensions of epsilon zero. So we put epsilon zero in square brackets. Dimension for mass is capital M, so M to minus one. Dimension for length is capital L, so L to minus three. Dimension for time is T to the fourth. And dimension for current is capital I. Um, in some literature, dimension for current is labeled as A, but in this course we're going to stick to this notation, we'll use the I for the dimension of current. Now, this technique that we've shown you in these two examples can be applied to find the units of any variable, not just a physical constant. Um, and as a homework, try to find out the units, for example, for Boltzmann's constant, for Avogadro's number, for permeability of free space, and for example, for uh, Stefan Boltzmann's constant.